Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for high-level traders to learn valuable trends and strategies, connect with other top traders, and become consistently profitable. Click the link in the description of this video to receive a special offer on our revolutionary PS60 training, access to our daily chat room filled with experienced traders, and so much more. Space is limited, so make sure you don't miss out. We look forward to seeing you in the room. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. I want to welcome all our friends who are joining us on the weekends, on uh, Facebook, Stock Twits, uh, Twitter, and obviously uh, the YouTube uh, platform. Welcome aboard. If you haven't uh, heard me or heard this broadcast for the first time, uh, everything that we talk about is based on technical analysis. Uh, gathering data. Okay, I've said this for many, many years. It's going to be almost 20 years for me uh, this May. Okay, and I've said this for many, many years. Opinions mean nothing. Okay, as everybody knows, at least if you've been following me for more than 30 seconds, you kind of know I am the self proclaimed king of the idiots. Okay, king of the idiots. There's nobody that's a bigger idiot on the planet than me. But the one thing that I've learned a long, long time ago. The fact that I'm an idiot, I need more clues. Um, I need more direction. I need the market tell me which way the wind is going to blow. I'm not that smart enough. Okay, none of us are that smart enough. None of us are this, that smart enough. We're that rich enough. We're never going to out cute. We're never going to outsmart the market. We always have to let the market dictate to us which way we should allocate our capital. It's very, very important understanding. And the one thing that you know, because of social media, and you know, people are. You know, a lot of new traders and a lot of novice traders, they're so, they're so emotionally wrapped up about their positions. And if anybody knows me, I, my favorite stock to trade is Tesla. Okay. I mean, hands down, I, I personally think it's, um, and, I, and I've said this numerous times, but um, I personally think it's probably top two or three best stocks I've ever traded in my life. The other one, uh, was Taser. If you guys remember Taser, especially from like the 2003, 2005 area, it was really, really an aggressive stock. And, you know, Tesla is one of these stocks that people really love or really hate, right? It's just, there's like no common ground. For me, you know, it's, it's completely and pun intended, a trading vehicle. Uh, I don't care uh, if the company goes to a thousand, I don't care if this company goes to zero. Okay. Would I rather have it go to a thousand? Because again, uh, the people who are working for the company and the shareholders that have kids will obviously benefit. Nobody benefits from a company going bankrupt. So before you turn around and say, well, Tesla's going to zero, this one's going to zero, think about the human side of what you're saying. Okay, There's going to be families they are going to have a, a tremendous amount of bad financial implications. So before you talk about a company going to zero, just think about their people who work for their children and all that good stuff. So that's that. But as far as the trading aspect of it, we trade ranges, okay? I'm a range trader. Whether it's a daily range, whether it's an intraday range, I trade ranges, okay? When the top of the channels get confirmed, right? I go long. When the top of the bottom of the channels go short, I go short, right? It, it, it's there's no uh, there's no cut and paste, you know. There's, there's nothing. There's there's no room for interpretation. This is why I always, especially for newer traders, I always try to champion technical analysis. Technical analysis. Uh, you don't need anybody, okay? If you were put in a room, okay, put in a room and by yourself and the only thing you have is your PC, your charts, that's all you have. You turn off Twitter, you turn off everything, you turn off the noise, you turn off the opinions, and all you need to do is trust the charts, right? Trust the charts, whatever studies that you're using, trust them, okay? If you can call yourself a trader, then you can say, I don't need social media, I don't need alerts, um, I don't need anybody to put myself in a situation that my account's going to grow and it's going to grow very, very organically. And it's going to, it's going to really grow based on my input, based on my my hard work, you know, trying to figure out my edge. And again, it doesn't mean my edge, right? I trade pivots. You know, you could trade futures, you could trade forex, you can trade uh, Bitcoin, whatever, whatever your drug of choice is. Okay, you can trade whatever you want, but technical analysis is the ultimate judge jury and equalizer. Okay. Somebody can tell me, Dan, you're wrong. Tesla's going to zero. Okay. I'm wrong. I don't care what you're saying. I'm either going to be right. Or I'm going to be wrong. Dan, I don't care what you're saying. Tesla's going a thousand. Okay. I might be short at that time. Okay. That's great. The point is folks, whatever decision you ever going to make, 
based on putting your money in the center of the table, at least have validation, okay? Validation based on uh, what you're seeing in front of you, gathering data, and again, if you're a new trader right now, and I get this question all the time, what's the first thing I should be doing is get yourself a thousand and one books on technical analysis. There's so much free information now uh, because of YouTube, because of the internet, uh, you know, Japanese candlesticks, whatever, whatever form of technical analysis, it, there's no such thing as bad education. Okay, guys, there's absolutely no, no such thing uh, as bad education. It's, you know, it's like saying, uh, it's like saying, you know, I want to learn, you know, I want to understand less so I can earn more. It doesn't make sense. You want to try to understand as much as possible in the stock market. Uh, technical analysis. Again, if, you, if you're into fundamental analysis, understand that. Learn how to read a balance sheet. Learn how to read, uh, you know, different type of filings. So if that's your thing. For me, it's all about uh, lines, right? The silly little, little lines. And it's all about what's going to happen next after uh, gathering, gathering up information. And that's kind of what it is. Okay. So, you know, when I look, when I take a position, I kind of look where the stock has gone from and where it's measured potential. You always hear me uh, talk about and use the word measured potential when I'm trading, especially over the 60 minute channels, because we know we can't guess where stock potentially could stop. We need to understand why. And for all, you know, for all the new people who are joining us right now and saying, asking themselves, well, why there's so many lines? Again, these are where the bodies are buried. This is where I know emotional buyers will meet technical sellers. And we will kind of talk about that in a few minutes from the macro uh, point of view. So market continues to bounce. Uh, yes, this is uh, a bear market. Okay. This is a bear market bounce. Um, you know, again, you could look again, the eyeballs, the greatest indicator you have, you could just see the same thing happening over and over again. We broke down, right? Double top here that we talked about a nausea in September broke below the 200 day moving average and started building. The longer something sticks, especially below the 200 day moving average, you are going to have a better high probability of a market imploding. Again, nobody ever talks about uh, Armageddon going to zero, all that, you know, dramatic stuff. We just talk about orderly back testing from supply to supply and demand to demand. That's all it is. And the longer it stays below the 200 day moving average, the longer that it could turn into something more than just an aggressive back test. So that's where we are, right? That's where we were. And you saw the data over and over again. You saw the bear market decline, right? They hit some sort of demand zone, right? Here, for example, you hit the linear regression line and we bounced, right? We had the bear market rally. We bounced into supply. We had the next, you know, next wave of selling, okay? We held the lower Bollinger Band. And again, the next bear market rally, right? Into supply. And then the last one, right? The last one got very, very aggressive. And this is the whole where people talk about, maybe it's a Santa Claus rally, we have to rally, we don't have to do anything. Remember, the market doesn't have to do anything, okay? Just because traditionally the market has done things over the last decade or so, nothing needs to happen, okay? That's the one thing. We're not entitled to anything. The Thanksgiving rally, uh, the Christmas rally, the January effect, we're not entitled. Yes, right now we're getting a pretty decent bounce in the markets, and we'll talk about the ramifications of that in a second. But again, remember, as a trader, the only thing you're, you are entitled to is properly educate yourself, okay? And that's up to you. Um, get a great process that fits your personality, not mine, your personality, your account size, your level of risk, all that good stuff, okay? And figure out where's the, the safest place to allocate your capital. And what we're seeing right now is exactly the same thing that we've seen the last several times. We're seeing a bear market, aggressive move, and now we are going into supply. And this is kind of where we talk about how great technical analysis really is. It, it really is one of the most purest, coolest things out there because there's no room for interpretation, okay? There's absolutely no room for interpretation. You can have uh, an opinion about a company 10 years from now, okay? But you cannot have a room of traders looking at the same thing, digesting the same information and having difference of opinions. It's all about levels. The stock market trades in levels, whether you're trading the Qs, Tesla, Amazon, Netflix, anything. Okay. You need to respect levels. And if you don't know where your levels are based on different intervals, daily charts or weekly charts or the 60 minute charts that I use uh, for uh, intraday cash flow opportunities, um, you know, you're trading blind. You're absolutely trading blind. So this is kind of where we are. Okay. So nice bounce, right? Nice two week bounce to start the year, uh, in the NASDAQ 100, uh, in the Russell, right in the Russell, 
and in the spies, right? Everything is good again, right? Even the bank stocks are rallying, right? It's all good. Even Goldman Sachs is rallying, right? Unbelievable. Ever, who would have thought Goldman Sachs could even ha have a two-day rally, let alone a two-week rally? So everything's all good in the world. Here's the problem, guys. Here, Well, not the problem, but here's kind of the, the situation we are seeing. We are seeing, and let's talk about the NASDAQ 100 because this is primarily uh, the members that I trade there. So here is kind of where we are going into this week. Uh, we are, in my opinion, um, in the bottom of the ninth with uh, two outs on, uh, two outs and nobody on in this bear market bounce. And why do I say that? If you guys notice, uh, the last time we saw this little line, right? This little uh, aqua line, I guess it's aqua, right? We got rejected after a rally into the first week of December, right? This is where we got rejected. And this started literally a waterfall effect into a pretty disgusting, aggressive sell-off uh, into, into the new year, right? So we're kind of faced with the same thing again, right? So here we are right here, and the cues, the big number this week, and again, there's no room for interpretation. You don't need a debate with another trader about this. This is what's, what's in front of us. So the 50-day supply uh, on, the, on the QQQs, roughly around the 162.30s, 162.40s level, okay? This will be, again, the ultimate judge, jury, and executioner. We're either going to get rejected off that level Okay, close below, and this measure potential will happen again, or we are going to hit that level. Okay, we're going to hit that level again. The first rejection is pretty much, in my opinion, I think is going to be set in stone unless we get this massive gap up on some crazy news that you know nobody could can 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 foresee. I think what's going to happen is no matter what, we're either going to hit that number and have a light fade, right, light feed, light fade, and only to reclaim it a couple of days later. Or we're going to hit that number and, well, take a look what possibly is going to happen in your future. So you have to know that level, okay? I, I don't care what you're trading. You can't, you know, close your eyes and put the blinders on and say, ah, you know, that idiot Shapiro, the king of the idiots, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, maybe I don't, okay, but maybe I do. And are you willing, and this is the question you have to ask yourself, are you willing to take that chance getting long into supply knowing there's a macro rejection and oh by the way we have a history of it for the last three months of kind of playing out exactly the same way so that 162 30s level is going to be incredible i mean i i can't emphasize it enough it's gonna be an incredibly important level okay and what you've seen in the last several days and again if you uh watch this broadcast going into last week right from last week we talked about how important that 157 level is. Remember, my guys, we talked about if the bulls can reclaim that 157 level, we should run to 62. So that's kind of where we are right now. So the dip buying, the dip buying that we are seeing in the last, especially in the last week, right? In the last week, uh, this is all a product of stocks going from supply to supply to supply to supply to supply, to supply until the bulls at least reclaim the 162 and a half level on a close. This is all just a fundamental exercise of bear market rally with a potential of, you know, seeing the lows once again. Again, China, they've been talking about for God knows how long, right? The wall, this, that, the other thing. Listen, for me, I, I, I don't care. It doesn't make a difference to me. Uh, you know, you have all these, you know, all these, uh, you know, talking heads, talking about the Fed, talking about this, talking about that. If you ask a professional trader, especially somebody uh, who's been doing this for a very long time, especially it trades a lot of their activity in the intraday cycles, when was the last time something really affected your trading, okay, from a macro point of view? The answer, it shouldn't. So all these excuses, it's a bear market, there's no liquidity, there's big spreads, uh, the Fed, my wife, my dog, my parakeet, these are all excuses, guys. Uh, it, it, I'm sorry, it's all excuses. Uh, from 2001 to 2003, when I couldn't make a dollar, literally when I couldn't make a dollar, I had the same excuses as everybody else. It's too hard. I'm not smart enough. It's not the dot com anymore. I don't know what to do. Oh, woe is me. Woe is me. Woe is me. Until I, you know, until I came across that whole self reflection and just realized that pity is for the weak, you know. And that's where I was. I was weak. I was. I was the prey. I, w I was the victim. I had every excuse in the world, but I had to make a choice. I'm either going to stop with the excuses and figure this out, okay, or I'm going to go away and become another statistic, okay? Fast forward, okay, fast forward. 
here we are again. I'm seeing a lot of traders with the same excuses. You know, I don't have enough money. I don't have a big enough account. Well, do something about it. If you don't have enough money, you don't have a big enough account, after the trading day, drive Uber, drive Lyft, get a job as a waiter, get a part-time job, do telemarketing, do something that's going to give you an opportunity to build your account right organically with a paycheck okay take half the money you make and put it into your trading account after taxes again if you are willing to do whatever it takes right and quote unquote i'm willing to do anything that it takes you have to actually be willing to do whatever it takes and you can't just sit there and hope and pray that somebody is going to you know give you the grace of god on your forehead and everything you know is going to be magically great again you have to make sure you take control of your own life you have to make sure you take control of your own trading. And when you are a professional trader or an aspiring professional trader, it's not excuses. It's the results. That's it. There's the old adage that I really like. The world doesn't want to hear about the labor pains. We just want to see the baby. That's it. Everybody has excuses. Everybody has bills. Everybody has kids. Everybody has problems. We work things out. We're adults. That's what trading is. It's not a, it's not a kid's game. Uh, it's not, you know, an area of your life that you're going to socialize and hopefully everything works out. It's an adult business for grown people who have families. Okay. And when you're trying and a guy like me who has a family, and I know a lot of you guys have the same way, when you have a family, you're going to do whatever it takes that you're going to win your battle on the other side of your trade. So again, guys, no more self-excuses. Okay. Nobody should ever have, especially in this day and age with all the technology, with all the free information. Again, you don't need, you don't need to come trade with me. You don't need to trade with me. You can trade by yourself, but take responsibility. It's very, very important. You can do it. You can absolutely do it. Whether you trade options, futures, forex, stocks, bonds, what baseball cards, whatever you want to trade, make sure you get the right education and make sure you are on the right path that you are in control of your own trade. Nobody else that you are in control. And I think technical analysis uh, is uh, incredibly, incredibly for it. So here's kind of where we are. Here's kind of where we are. We saw the last couple of days of contraction, okay? And when you see contraction, what usually happens is a lot of professional market professionals kind of know where we are, okay? We're very, very close into supply. And if you look at the NASDAQ 100 stocks over the last couple of days, you can see some of the companies, right? are already at supply, okay, already at supply and starting to get a little weaker. Look at Amazon, right? Look at Amazon, right? It hit supply three, four days ago, and look what it's been doing. It's just been hovering in supply, hovering in supply, hovering in supply. Now, you can make an argument, right? The bullish case on Amazon. Remember, I'm not a bull, I'm not a bear, I'm an opportunist, okay? You can make that argument that Amazon is resting, right? You can make that argument, absolutely, okay? You can make an argument that Google left that hit supply, right? It's resting. You can make an argument after Roku hit supply, it came in, it's resting. But you guys see the you guys see the common denominator here? Hit supply, faded, hit supply, faded, hit supply, faded, right? Everybody, everybody's getting, getting common denominator. The problem is if the QQQs, if these stocks cannot rally, okay, and the QQQs hit supply, everybody see where I'm going with this? these stocks will start going lower. Now, again, earnings season starts. We got Netflix who's been ridiculously hot, right? Ridiculously hot. We have Tesla who's been ridiculously hot. We got a billion dollar, uh, you know, a billion dollar investment from Larry Ellison, blah, 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 all that good stuff. So there's a lot of stocks that are hot. Even NVIDIA, right? Even NVIDIA who's been a really good trader over the last couple of days. We'll talk about the individual pivots uh, from Friday. But you can see the majority of names already getting very, very tired. And the whole point is when stocks or ETFs or whatever the case may be hit supply, that's what happens. You are getting a backtest. So if you want a very clean view of what a backtest looks like, look what happens when stocks hit supply, right? Amazon hit supply at 1675. It went as low as 1621 a couple of days ago. Uh, Google hit supply, right? Hit supply at 1093. Went as low as to 1056. Again, nobody says so hitting supply will turn into the new next wave of selling, new lows, new lows, new lows, but at least have an understanding of what happens when stocks will hit supply. And you can go through, uh, you can go through a whole bunch of names here as well. Again, Alibaba hit supply twice, faded twice, right? Again, nobody's saying Armageddon, but again, we have to take into consideration the macro point of view of what could happen next. So again, going into this week, guys, again, very, very important. Just kind of make it short and sweet. Right, 162.30s, this is the area. This is the do or die, this is the line in the sand. This is the area that I believe 
technical sellers will meet emotional buyers. And again, 99 out of 100 times, technical sellers will win. So if you are a trader, uh, especially from the intraday ranks, if you're an investor, obviously, does it really matter to you uh, where your investments are going to be five years from now? Probably not. But if you are a trader and you are an active market participant day in, day out, uh, it's incredibly important to understand uh, where the micro potential in a macro channel uh, looks like. So uh, Friday session, again, I've been saying this for a long, long time now. It, it's not how many trades you put on. It's how many trades you put on profitably. The days of trading 10, 15 stocks are over a day. I mean, it's over. Um, I'm averaging now like three to four trades a day. Those, I mean, those are my spots. I trade only six candles in a day. Out of the six candles, if I could get three to five, you know, three to five really solid pivots, hey, who's better than us? And again, the greatest thing about trading beta, you know, I trade the same stocks over and over and over again every single day. Tesla, Netflix, NVIDIA, Amazon, Google, it's the same things over and over again. So we understand their tendencies. We understand what they're supposed to do. We understand what happens when a pivot uh, gets triggered by a second entry and all that good stuff. We understand this. So I, this is my, this is my macro and micro universe. So when these are the only stocks I pretty much pay attention to, obviously I put in uh, other names into the live webinar, uh, into uh, the Twitter, both the Twitter live feed and the stock to its live feed. But for me personally, um, I stick to my names. You know, I stick to my names. And Friday, uh, you can see it. And, and I, I, you know, I get this question, you know, randomly from people uh, all the time. What you guys are looking right now is the stock tweets feed. Uh, it's the same thing as the Twitter feed. It's just we, we you know, we do this on, on multiple platforms. Um, so there, there is no cherry picking. Whatever you see. Um, me putting into the channel. These are the pivots. There's nothing else. And so this was, you know, Thursday's, you know, this is a Thursday night's watch list, uh, Thursday night's list, Thursday night's uh, video. And, you know, these were the pivots from Friday. You can see it. Um, again, there's no cherry picking here. NVIDIA, 145, uh, 70, 146 needs to build. Uh, the reason why, again, look in the video's chart. If you look at the 60 minute view, uh, if you look at the 60 minute on the view on the video, here is the, you know, here is supply, right? Here's the supply right here. Once it broke above supply, just absolutely exploded, uh, broke out when it's highest to 49 and change. Uh, big move. Again, there's, there's no, there's no picking and choosing here. Again, you can, and this is how you know Friday was, Friday morning was a really tight session. When was the last time you guys heard me talking about General Motors, right? General Motors. I, again, I, I personally didn't take this trade. I couldn't care less about General Motors, but the more, more important is, again, it's not about me. It's about the process. And again, it's what you feel comfortable, not me. If I feel comfortable trading Amazon, you feel comfortable trading General Motors. It's the same process. Just trade what you feel comfortable. So again, uh, General Motors, uh, 3730, pre-market high needs to build. Uh, and again, why is 3, uh, 3730 important? Here's the opening range candle. Once it built above that candle, 3730, went again to 38. Now again, in my world, right, when you're trading Tesla or Amazon, is a 70 cent move a big deal? No, it's not a big deal on Tesla. It's not a big deal on, on NVIDIA. It's not a big deal on Amazon. But it's a $30 stock and you get a you know, really good aggressive channel with some good cash flow. Hey, who's better than you? So again, not everything needs to be the epicenter of the world either ending or continuing. Sometimes a trade is just a trade is a trade. Cash flow is just cash flow. Again, it all adds up at the end. So good job for all you guys who did take uh, General Motors. I mean, what are you going to say about Tesla? Everybody knows, uh, you know, this is... This is really, you know, this is incredibly my, my favorite stock. Again, I don't care which way. I trade it short. I trade it long. It doesn't make a difference. So here's what we talked about, right? Uh, this is at 9.32 in the morning. Okay. It's not like we talked about it at, you know, when it broke out. 9.32 in the morning. There's only six candles. Again, we, we take away the fear of missing out. We, we know where these channels should get reclaimed. So uh, Tesla, and I wrote here, we've been rejected 344 three times. Okay, not once, twice, three times. Needs to reclaim, build, and go. And why was uh, that area important, right? Why was that area important? If you look at the 60-minute channel, and yet you're not going to see it clean, because again, you have to understand where it is. So here's the 60-minute channel. The top of this channel here is 334, right? 334 is the top of this channel here. The previous day high uh, was 345.39. Okay, so these are two points of interest. But I said, hey, if it could reclaim that 344 where it got rejected once, twice, three times, right? Four times, right? Once it could reject it, once it could reclaim, it can go. And, you know, Tesla put up that initial move, scaled back, right? Came back in. Uh, we used that second entry and the stock went from uh, 334 to almost 348 and a half. So big, big move on Tesla as well. 
uh, NVIDIA, just again, we talked about NVIDIA absolutely exploded. And, and again, I said, you know, nice, aggressive early moves. Let's stay, stay patient now. Um, this pivot never triggered. You can see it here. But I really like this setup if Amazon actually wakes up, okay? Uh, it needs to reclaim 1665 to go. Now, again, just from the educational point of view, somebody's going to turn around and say, well, well why is 1665 uh, an important level. If, if you look right here, the candle right here is 1663, right? 1663. Uh, the high here was 1660. Uh, the Bollinger Band on Friday was 1665. So you can see it here. If, they could, if Amazon can just start building above this channel here at 1665, then it can absolutely explode. Now here's the problem, right? If we get rejected, now we're looking for a channel to the downside. Right. So if you, if you just look base, if you just look at the chart, right, if you look at the chart, if we know the upside is 1665, right, if we know the upside is 1665, now we're looking for a sneaky candle back to the downside. So check this out, guys. You see this whole sneaky can channel right here, right? Everybody see this sneaky channel here? You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You have 11 hours of distribution, right? And you already know daily chart Amazon already got rejected. Correct? It already got rejected here. So if Amazon, again, th these are all levels that still need to be confirmed, but if Amazon can start building below this channel here, then you have all the way room to 1618. And if that channel gets confirmed and if the market starts back testing, you can see how much potential you have to the downside. So again, there's nothing random about pivots, guys. We don't, you know, we don't put these things on social media to cherry pick any of these things. These are the levels. These are the levels, whether they could get confirmed or not. These are the levels, okay? So for example, I wrote in the, in the afternoon that, you know, obviously never happened, but the Qs needed a 169.70. The bulls need that level to reclaim. And why was that level important? Still, in, at least still important. You can see it, 169.70, right? Look at the top here. Once, uh, I'm sorry, 160.84, 160.86. So it really needs, I think I wrote 160, you know, I wrote the wrong number. It was 167. There's obviously not 169.70, but you can see it. 160.70, it really needs to reclaim. And it needs to reclaim this channel here. If they could just reclaim this channel here, and this Bollinger Band will go lower, and the bulls will have a leg to stand on. So there's nothing random about pivots. Again, are pivots for everybody? No. There's a lot of misconception that you need a million dollar account, a five, five to fifty million dollar account. Look, do you need equity in your account to trade Amazon? Of course. Do you need equity in your account to trade Netflix and Tesla? Absolutely. You can't trade with me with a with a $2,000 account, but at the same time, you don't need a $500,000 account. There's plenty of people in the live webinar have 25, 30, 40, $50,000 accounts. There's people in the, in, the, in the live webinar who are under the pattern day trading rule. Not a lot, right? I'm not telling you a lot, but there are people who are under there who just want to understand the principles of why these pivots work. Again, I demonstrated this through this week. I put two stocks that had nothing to do with beta. I think one was, uh, and you can go through, I, I think you can go through my uh, Twitter account. Um, one was uh, AX, AXSM, right? AXSM, and I, I wrote that the, there was a pivot here. Uh, it, it, I think it was uh, whatever it was, and I said if it could break below that channel, the stock should go lower. Again, I had nothing to do with this. I didn't trade the stock. It wasn't for me. But I just want to show you guys that you don't need to trade beta to trade pivots. Uh, again, as long as stocks trade in channels and there's liquidity, you can trade pivots. So it's very, very uh, important to understand that. I even took a small cap trade this week. I know hell was freaking over, freezing over, but I, I, I even took a small cap trade this week. Again, again, just to show you, I bought this uh, APHA 660, went to like 690s uh, before earnings. And then obviously the earnings, uh, earnings are actually pretty decent. It looks like it went to 720. But the point is you don't need to trade Amazon to trade pivots. You don't need to trade Facebook and Tesla and Netflix to trade pivots. These are organic channels, guys. Understand this. These are organic channels that once they are confirmed to the upside, to the downside, you have a very high probability of getting the measured room potential. That's all it is. So going into this week, folks, uh, again, very, very important. Just to want to give you guys uh, one last look. Uh, again, Qs are right in their, you know, right in their area of interest, 6230s. We might get one or two more updates. Hopefully it could play out tomorrow. I would love to see early aggression, this, you know, early aggression in the morning, hit supply, get short, and hopefully make both on both sides smart. We'll see how it plays out. Again, I don't want to put the cart in front of the horse, but we know the 6230s level is going to be uh, super duper important for the NASDAQ 100. Uh, the IWM is getting close to that as well. This 144.60s area, 
uh, is getting there as well. Spies still have a little bit of room. That's why I say we still could have maybe one or two days of rallying, or if it can happen all in one day, would be fine as well. Uh, the spies, you can see it. The spies around this uh, 263 area, uh, if it gets down there, uh, this will be the day of reckoning. So for all you guys who are uh, joining us tomorrow in the live webinar, please get there at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. That's when we start morning strategy. For all you guys who are joining us via the Twitter live pivot feed uh, or the stock twits uh, live pivot, uh, Twitter feed, uh, it starts up. You know, it starts up uh, normal time, normal time, uh, right at the open. Uh, I put in the pivots, early morning pivots there. Uh, again, if anybody has any questions, feel free. Again, guys, it's all about education. It's all about strategy. God is great. Life is great. Love somebody, make somebody smile, and have a great trading week. And I'll see you guys all in the field tomorrow. Later, guys.